The scatter on surface is a new modifier coming in Blender 5.0, and it makes it so easy to create vegetation, grass, debris, or whatever else you want to scatter along the surface of the mesh. In this video, we're going to walk through every single setting and figure out how it all works. Just like the new array modifier which we talked about a couple weeks ago, the scatter on surface modifier is also built on geometry nodes. That means it's completely non-destructive and very easily customizable. The name describes exactly what it does. It either takes a mesh, curve, or even a text object and scatters them along the surface of the mesh that the modifier is applied to. To add this modifier in, select your object and then go over to the modifier panel. Select Add Modifier, Generate, and then you'll see the Scatter on Surface. Before we talk about all of the top settings, let's go down to the Instancing tab. Here is where you can select either an object or a collection that you want to instance. Object will allow you just to use a single object to scatter around, and Collection is used for entire groups of objects. This can be very useful if you have a group of rocks or plants that you want to scatter around. With it set to collection, you also have the option to check pick instance. Pick instance, if left unchecked, will instance the entire collection as one object. If it is checked, then it will randomly select the objects in that collection and instance them around. To better understand the differences of why you would use this or not use it, let's say you have a tree with multiple parts, branches, leaves, the roots, all that kind of thing. If you select a collection, you'll want to make sure pick instance is not checked, or the tree will be separated into multiple parts as you can see right here. On the other hand, if you have a group of blades of grass or rocks, you'll want to make sure pick instance is checked so that it randomly selects the objects in that collection instead of the entire collection as a whole. The other setting that we have here in this tab is the Reset Transform. Sometimes if the object is not at the center of the world when it's inside that collection, you're going to get some really strange results as the objects are all over the place. To fix this, you can just select Reset Transform and it will bring all the objects towards the center of the world and then the instances will be in the correct position. And then of course, if you're using multiple layers of instances, you want to make sure that the seed is different between all of them. Moving back up a little bit, the viewport visibility slider acts as a percentage of the objects that are going to be displayed in the viewport. This can be useful if you have thousands of objects and the viewport is starting to lag a little bit, you can bring this percentage down to smooth things out. And when you render it, all of the objects are still going to show up. The last setting here in the instancing tab is the realize instances checkbox. Currently with it unchecked, all of the objects that are scattered around are just instances and not real geometry. Meaning if you try to add modifiers on top of this, it's not going to affect these scattered objects until you check Realize Instance, which converts them into real geometry as you can see down here. Now before we talk about the Transform and Randomize, let's jump back up to the top here and work our way down. The Density method controls how the objects are distributed along the surface. With it set to Amount, you can set the exact number of objects that you want with this setting. With it set to density, you can either distribute the objects randomly, or you can use the poi, poise, poison, poison, poisson. That method, random obviously just randomly scatters the objects all along the mesh, and the amount is controlled by the density slider. If the density is high enough, you'll definitely see some clipping on the objects. To prevent this, you can switch the mode over to poisson, which gives you a minimum distance that the objects must be from each other when they're scattered around. This is a great setting to have because normally with hair particles, there's no control over how close they are to each other, and you'll always have some clipping visible in the render. But with this setting, it completely solves that problem. The other setting that we have here is a distribution mask, and this setting basically acts as a percentage slider. However, if you click the button on the side, you can now use an attribute to control the mask. For example, if you create a new vertex group, you can paint on certain areas of the mesh that you want. And then from here, you can select that group in the drop down menu. Keep surface will either remove or keep the original mesh in the scene. This can be useful if you don't want the original mesh to show up in the render, but you still want all of these scattered particles to be there. Scatter on instances will allow other instances from other modifiers to be scattered on top of the original instances. For example, if you stack two of these modifiers on top of each other, the second one you check scatter on instances, now all the new objects will be scattered on top of the instances that were from the first modifier. 
Keep in mind these scale numbers matter quite a bit here. Whatever the scale is for the first modifier will be multiplied to the new instances. This can result in some different scales between the different objects. In order to fix this, all you have to do is make sure the first modifier scales are always at 1, and now any new instances that are on top of other instances will be exactly the same throughout the entire thing. And then obviously, if you don't like the pattern of these scattered objects, you can change the seed value here. Since we already talked about the instancing tab, let's jump down a little bit to the transform tab. The surface offset offsets the particles based on the normals of the surface. For example, if you have a cube here, if you bring this value up, all of the objects are going to go in the direction of the faces. The align rotation rotates the scattered objects based on the axis that you select. For example, if you have this tree here and you don't want it to be sideways, just switch it over and now you're good to go. And of course, the scale value allows you to control how big or small the objects are. And this can also be controlled with an attribute. In this example, I've created a gradient vertex group that spreads across the surface of the mesh, and then when you select it for the scale and location, you get this interesting result. Another really awesome feature that is also in the array modifier is the randomize. Here you can randomize the location, rotation, or scale of your object. And you have individual control over each axis. And below that is the flipping, and thanks to this comment I learned that this setting actually flips the object around based on the axis that you select. For this to work, you're going to need to use an asymmetrical mesh. Using a cube or a cylinder, you're not going to see much difference. But with a monkey head, now you can actually see what this does. Keep in mind, this will also invert the normals of these scattered objects. There's probably a way to fix this in geometry nodes, but I wasn't able to figure it out. So if you know how to fix the normals after they're flipped, let me know in the comments down below. And at the very bottom, you have the option to change the seed of the randomized to experiment and get different results. The last tab that we have here is the masking, and here you can use an image to control the density of the scattered objects. So if you have a black and white texture, you can plug that in directly right here and get some pretty interesting effects. Now that we've gone through all of the different settings, how can we actually use this modifier and what are some practical use cases? The very first one obviously is vegetation. Scattering grass, weeds, or trees is very easy with this new modifier. Another great use case for this would be procedural rumble. Spreading debris or pebbles or rocks along a gravel road is a great way to use this. Or you could do some more abstract things by creating a dynamic paint vertex group and plugging that into the randomized scale and rotation. You can get some really cool results that way. But there we go. We now covered everything that there is to know about the scatter on surface modifier coming in Blender 5.0. Thank you very much for watching, and thank you to all of my current patrons. You can see all of their names right here. I'll put the link to that down in the description. You can get every single blend file I've ever created on this channel. Make sure to subscribe because next week we're going to be talking about the curve to tube. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.